Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you how you can make an attractive presentation space for you and your colleagues to review and present it. Let's get started. First thing we want to do is set up our environment with the world axes, and I'll turn on the stage as well. This will give me a good base to build off of. Don't worry if the stage looks a little bit small, it adjusts to the geometry in the space. The next thing we'll do is press the blue menu button and drag in some reference images. So I have some images here in a folder from a power user, Ollie. Essentially, he has some inspiration images, some process sketches, and some final renderings that he did. To exit the folder, press the icon in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, we'll exit the menu, and you can see that my images aren't anchored to my stage floor. They're floating independently. To anchor them, grab them and press the blue menu button at the same time. Now they'll scale and move around with the rest of the geometry we'll be creating. So I'll just go ahead and anchor all my images and take these and move them out of the way because right now we're gonna spend time building the stage. Okay, the first thing I'll do is press the purple tools menu and grab the revolve tool. Now I wanna center this at zero, zero, zero and lock it with the Y axis. So I'll half hold my non-drawing hand trigger and make my controller parallel with the Y axis. Then I'll move my hand to the axis and it will automatically snap. So now I'll just drop a random shape in the space because I know I'm gonna put it in edit mode and refine it further. If you look at the graph on the menu, while the object's in edit mode, we can grab this center point here and slide it to the center of the graph and it's gonna make the revolve tool solid. So I want these to step in, so I'll duplicate the same geometry and use Smart Move to push in the edit points, creating a step effect for the stage. I'll just do that one or two times and then shift it up and down so the steps look like they're at the same height. So I accidentally moved the stage and if you make any mistakes like this, just press the red back button to undo the move that you made. So the next thing we'll do is try and clean things up a bit. So we'll press the blue menu button and go to our layers tab. I'll create some new layers here, name them. In this case, I'll make the layer for my reference images and then create the next layer for the stage. You can take geometry and drop it into a layer by grabbing it and holding it over that layer until you see a green bounding box. And then you let go and that geometry is dropped on that specific layer. Great, so I'm gonna continue adding on to the stage uh, and I don't want anything to get disrupted. So I'll lock some of my earlier layers and turn stage floor off in the settings so that it's not distracting from the stage that I am creating. Now you'll notice I get an error message here. To fix this, just make sure that your active layer has the eyeglass on it by clicking that layer. When a layer is locked, you'll get that warning message. Okay, so we have a good stage now, and what I want to create is a backboard for the images to be hung on. So I'll go back to the Revolve tool and use the same axes that I had before and draw a loose shape in the space and put it into edit mode. Now I know I want this shape to be straight, so I just want two edit points. So I'll delete the ones in the center. And I'll adjust the thickness so that I just have a little bit of material thickness. And then take the point above that and adjust the rotation of the Revolve geometry in the space. All right, so we have a good backboard now. I'll switch my tool so that I don't have that revolve indicator in the space and change the color to gray. Next thing I'll do is take the images that I have and start to sort them. So the first images I have in the space here are the inspiration images, and I'll just start to place them in an attractive way on the backboard of the stage. Once again, I accidentally moved something, so I'll press the red back button and take this backboard and drop it onto my stage layer so that it's locked and I'm not moving it around any further. So I'll continue to do what I did with the inspiration images with the rest of the process images. So here, 
Ali's created some sketches. I'll lay them out as a process part of the board. And then he has some final renders as well that I'll stagger and find the most attractive way of displaying in the space. All right, so now I have the images laid out on the board and everything looks pretty good. So the next thing I'll do is add a constraint. I just wanna lock everything to Y axis so that I'm not tilting in all directions. So I'll go to the settings menu and turn on vertical lock. Next, I'll press the blue menu button and go to the prefabs tab. Now in Ollie's presentation, he had some OBJs and gravity sketch models that he created, and I have them all saved here as prefabs. So I'll trigger select them and drag them into the space. Okay, so that looks like all of the models. I'll switch back over to the built-in models tab and close my menu. So now I'll take these models and place them around the space at the different stages and help convey the story of how Ollie arrived at this final design. If you want to group different objects together, you can select them all, hold them, and press the purple menu button. So with this last model, I want to create something special and have a layout of different colors and materials uh, that this slide could be sold in. So I'll go back to the revolve tool and make a little stand here, put it into edit mode and adjust things the way I like, and then add thickness to the geometry. The next thing I'll do is take that final model and place it in the center and then duplicate it so it's revolved around that show model in the center. I'll take the base that they're sitting on and drop them onto the stage layer as well. Now I'll go in and change the base color of the slides and then ungroup them by holding them and pressing the tools menu button and adjust some of the individual components so that we have different colorways. So the last thing we'll do is add some text. So we'll go to the purple tools menu, press the primitives tab and select the text option. And now I can add some text to add another dimension to the presentation. So I'll label the different parts of the presentation here, inspiration, process sketching, and the final result. You'll notice I'm not creating new text. I'm actually just duplicating the text I already have in the space and putting it into edit mode to change what I want it to say. So now I'll take these individual pieces of text, scale them by using both grab triggers, and place them over their respected section. All right, so now we have our final presentation space, which is a great way of visually showing a story and explaining your design process to share with colleagues, professors, and management. This, of course, is a useful tool in combination with co-creation because now you can have multiple stakeholders in the same virtual environment and you can guide them through your presentation and actually have them leave notes and maybe change some of the colorways of the objects in the scene, allowing you and your team or clients to work together creatively. So the last step here I'll show you is how to take a normal sketch and turn it into a co-creation room. First, trigger select the co-creation icon in the center and grab your sketch with the grab sphere, hold it and drag it over to the co-creation turntable. Once you let go, it will populate as its own sketch and you can trigger select it, enter the room and invite other people to join you in the space. Thanks for watching.